And this conference will now be recorded. When do we need a biosafety cabinet? Safety cabinets. The first thing to do is probably to define exactly what a biosafety cabinet is. Uh, actually, it's a it's a, it's an enclosure that aims at protecting the operator mainly from possible contamination by infectious aerosols when they when they work during handling. Um, the, the enclosure can be partial or complete. It can be a system which is totally closed or which is partly open. And you will see that most of them are partly open. And then it aims are protecting the operator, but also the laboratory environment from any contamination and also indirectly the outside environment and also the community. And so it's, it's really a protective equipment, but it's protective against infectious aerosols. We'll see later that there are some other uh, type of closure that uh, may protect uh, the operator and the work environment from other uh, hazards, from, for instance, from, uh, from the hazard from chemical substance, and those are the chemical foods. And there are some other uh, cabinets or enclosures that protect the product or experiment from external contamination, like, for instance, the laminar flow benches. Biosafety cabinets are different because they are really there to protect the operator and the community environment and so on from infectious aerosols. So it's very specific. Actually, aerosols are present everywhere in nature uh, and infectious aerosols are a major source of infection in laboratories, but also naturally. For instance, uh, when someone has a, a respiratory disease, uh, that person, person when she when when he or she talks or when she or he or she sneezes, coughs, and so on, will emit some particles. That those particles can contain viruses, bacteria, and to that uh, to that they will disseminate those droplets, those aerosols, into the air and infect other people. Um, in laboratories. We can also generate aerosols in, by many activities that involve the handling, mixing, or pouring of liquids. And I will detail that a little bit more. But it's also the case during accidental spill. If you look at the second picture on the, on the right hand side, you see that that person is just uh, taking a sample from a bottle to um, a rubber septum. So it does, not, it does not open the bottle, just with a syringe goes through the septum and then removes the needle. And you see that, that very simple operation that we think is devoid of any risk because, because we don't even open the bottle. There is a kind of aerosol which is emitted, like some small droplets that are there. That means that the bottle will be contaminated, the syringe, the, uh, the needle, also the gloves of that person, but those droplets might also contaminate the environment and could also infect the person. And so, so that even a simple activity like that is likely to produce an aerosol. Also, it may infect the person, but it can also uh, contaminate everything. So we need to take both, uh, both possibilities into account. So um, aerosols are defined as liquid droplets or solid particles suspended in the air. And you see that there are many types of, of aerosols in the environment, like clouds, smoke, we can also use aerosols, for instance, to disseminate some, uh, some drugs into the lungs or to disseminate some, uh, some particles into the air. Um, those aerosols may or not, may not be infectious. Infectious aerosols are mainly made of suspended liquid droplets that contain infectious agent. It could also be some uh, naked particles of infectious agents when the droplets have dried out. But in most of the cases, it's a liquid that contains a, a number of, of infectious agents, a number of viral particles, a number of bacteria. This is very important, I think. Uh, actually, it's the time uh, for aerosols to settle, to deposit, uh, with respect to, to their size. And you see that the very big aerosol particles, like uh, 100 uh, micrometers, they settle after a few seconds, while the very fine one, the very tiny droplets, they will take more than 40 hours to settle. So it will stay in the air for much more than one day. If it's in still air, it will stay more or less at the same space, at the same place. If there is some air movement, if there is some, there are some air flows, it will move into the air. 
and so it can be transported on, on quite long distances. But so you should really remember this, that uh, the size of the particles is really uh, has a very big impact on the time to settle, and very small particles will stay in the air for a very long time. So uh, if we have infectious aerosols, we need to, uh, to the different. We need to, to control them, and there are two main ways to control them. The first one is the use of airflow, so the use of the air movements. Basically, what we try to do is take the, the air, the contaminated air that, con, uh, that uh, transport the, the, the particles away from the operator or from or from the area that, that we need to protect. So, using airflows to take the air, the contaminated air away from, from the persons. The second way is uh, filtration. And for that, we use HEPA filter, which are high efficiency particulate air filters to retain the aerosol particles. And you see here a few pictures, that's a, a complete HEPA filter. And you see here on the second picture that it's not like a, like a, a similar layer of something with some holes. It's really a deep layer of fibers that are mixed together in, in a non-coordinated way. And you see that the particles, they, some particles stay, get stopped immediately and some others take more time to get absorbed. But finally, when you take into account the depth of the filter, uh, it reduced the, the particles to almost zero on the other side of the, of, of the filter. So this type of filter is extremely eff efficacious, efficient, to retain solid and liquid particles uh, transported in, in the air. But it does not retain volatile molecules like solvent molecules, gases and vapors. We need to realize that even the smallest aerosol droplets are 1000 times bigger, larger than, uh, than molecules. And so molecules will go through the HEPA filter, so it will not retain those molecules, particles will be stopped. And actually, when we come back, go back to biosafety cabinets, they use both means. They always use airflows and also HEPA filtration. So they, are, they use the two mechanisms to control aerosols. I think this is something that is also very important to understand. If we have a filter, which is just one layer of, of something with some holes, the large particle will be stopped and the fine particles, the particles which are smaller than the holes, will go through it. And so we would have a curve like, like this one. So that's the size of the, of the hole and everything above that larger will be stopped. Everything which is smaller will go through. With HEPA filters, we have always a V curve like this. And we have a weak point region. And that's the region where particles tend to penetrate the most. And that region is always up between 0.2 and 0.3 micron, okay? But that means that the efficacy of a filter, which is based on, on this point here, or on the design point, which is also where the filters are tested, actually the efficacy is much better, not only for the large particles, but also for most of the smaller particles. So HEPA filters have that kind of unique feature that they retain large particles, but also very small ones. And so from that point of view, we can remember that HEPA filters are almost absolute filters to retain aerosols because the large particles will be retained, but also the very fine one. And so if we say that a HEPA filter are, has a 99.975% efficacy, uh, that's where it tested. Actually, the efficacy is much higher, close to 100% for the largest and the smallest particles. So extremely efficient for that. So when should we use a biosafety cabinet? Actually for, hand, for any handling of infectious materials that are likely to generate aerosol. If the material is not infectious or there is no, no risk from that material, there is no, no need to use one of course. But if you handle infectious, uh, 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 infectious materials, so liquid solutions with some infectious particles, then you are likely to generate aerosols and it's better to use a biosafety cabinet. And that's the case if, for instance, if, if you are pouring liquids, if you are pipetting, mixing, including vertexing, if you do some sampling or are using pressurized equipment like bioreactors, for instance, or if you use a, a, a pump 
to pump some liquid, infectious liquid from one place to the other. Uh, that is, the pump puts some pressure in the liquid. If there is any leakage or anything like that, uh, you will create an aerosol. And also any handling that involves some risk of accidents and spill. So if you do a lot of handling uh, of infectious uh, materials, in liquids, and there, there is of course a risk of accident and spill in that case, also it's better to do it in a biosafety cabin. So this is the end of this very first part, uh, and uh, I will leave some time for uh, Javed to, to do, a, it's not really a translation, it's mostly a summary in, uh, uh, in Urdu, and then perhaps answer a few questions, at least they are, they are directly uh, in link with this presentation. Javed? Okay, so our uh, total basically biosafety community webinars are total four. In we basically iske types and uh, working ke bare mein jo hai na, wo Phir, agla jo hamara hoga, wo biosafety cabinets ko install karte hain, aur uski installation and maintenance kaise karenge. Phir, तीसरा जो हमारा वेबिनार होगा वो हमारा होगा कि बायोसेफ्टी कैमरेट में हम सेफली किस तरह काम करते हैं और चौथा सेशन ऐसा होगा कि जिसमें आप लोगों के डिफरेंट क्वेश्चंस जो है ना वो हम आंसर देने की जो है ना वो उसकी कोशिश करेंगे अब अगर इस सेशन की हम बात करें सिर्फ के बायोसेफ्टी कैमरेट का अगर हम इंट्रोडक्शन पे जाएं तो बायोसेफ्टी कैमरेट बेसिकली एक ऐसा आला है कि जिसमें हम इंफेक्शियस जो एरोसोल है या जो इंफेक्शियस एजेंट्स है उसके साथ काम करते ही इस नियत से कि हम अपने आप को जिस प्रोडक्ट में हम काम कर रहे हैं जिस चीज पे हम काम कर रहे हैं और उसको बचा सके और एनवायरनमेंट को बचा सके अब बायोसेफ्टी कैबिनेट की तरह जो है ना हमारे पास और भी مختلف जो है ना वो आलात है जिसमें एक केमिकल फ्यूम हो जाता है कि जिसमें हम केमिकल पे काम करने के दौरान ऑपरेटर और को और एनवायरनमेंट को बचाने की कोशिश करते हैं फिर एक हमारे पास लेमिनर फ्लो हुड होता है फ्लो बेंच होता है कि जिसमें हमारा मकसद जो है ना वो प्रोडक्ट की प्रोटेक्शन होता है अब इंफेक्शियस एरोसोल चूंकि हम बायोसेफ्टी कैबिनेट में जब हम काम कर रहे होते हैं तो हमारा मेन टारगेट जो है ना वो इंफेक्शियस एरोसोल से जो है एनवायरनमेंट प्रोडक्ट और ऑपरेटर को बचाना होता है अब एरोसोल बेसिकली अगर इंफेक्शियस एरोसोल से पहले हम एरोसोल एरोसोल देखें तो एरोसोल बेसिकली हवा में कोई भी मालिक चीज चाहे वो लिक्विड फॉर्म में हो या सॉलिड फॉर्म में हो वो एरोसोल है लेकिन अगर इसी एरोसोल में फॉर एग्जांपल हम जब कफिंग करते हैं या स्नीजिंग करते हैं जो हमारी लिक्विड ड्रॉपलेट्स होते हैं ये बेसिकली एरोसोल है अब अगर इसमें मैं इंफेक्शियस एजेंट को ऐड कर दूं तो ये इंफेक्शियस एरोसोल है अब इन इंफेक्शियस एरोसोल पे काम करने के दौरान जो है पे काम करना जिसमें अगर हमें खदशा हो कि कोई भी स्पिल वगैरह या कोई भी जो है ना हमारे पास लिक्विड की ड्रॉपलेट्स या उसकी स्प्लैशेस वगैरह छींटे वगैरह जो है ना वो प्रोड्यूस होने की या पैदा होने का खदशा होता है तो उस दौरान हम बायोसेफ्टी कैमरेट को इस्तेमाल करते हैं अब ये जो इंफेक्शियस एरोसोल है या ये जो ड्रॉपलेट्स है जो हवा में मौलिक है डिफरेंट साइज के हो सकते हैं जितना साइज इसका छोटा होगा ये इतना ही हवा में मौलिक रहेगा उतनी देर हवा में मौलिक फॉर एग्जांपल एक टीबी का पेशेंट जो है ना वो अगर एक लिबर्ट एक रूम में है और उसने कफिंग की और उसके अंदर जो है ना वो जो टीबी के जो ऑर्गेनिज्म है तो जितना उसकी वो जो स्नीजिंग या कफिंग के जो ड्रॉपलेट्स है वो जितने माइन्यूट होंगे उतनी जो है ना वो जो ड्रॉपलेट्स है वो हवा में मौलिक रहेंगे और उतनी जो है ना वो रूम रिस्की रहेगा अब हमारे पास बायोसेफ्टी कैमरा दो प्रिंसिपल पे काम करता है एक हमारे पास है एयर फ्लो और एक है हीपा फिल्ट्रेशन एयर फ्लो ये है कि वो एयर फ्लो का मतलब ये है कि हवा को एक जगह से दूसरी जगह ले जाना और हीपा फिल्ट्रेशन का मतलब ये है कि इसमें डिफरेंट फिल्टर्स होते हैं फिल्टर के डिफरेंट जो है ना वो लेयर्स होते हैं जिसमें हमारा मकसद होता है कि हम वो जो इंफेक्शियस एरोसोल या वो जो पार्टिकल्स है उसको हम जो है ना वो घेरने की कोशिश करें तो इसमें सिर्फ बायोसेफ्टी कैमरेट में जो एक चीज जो लिमिटेशन है वो ये है कि जो हमारी लिक्विड जो गैसेस है या जो मॉलिक्यूल्स है और वेपर्स है वो हमारे यहां इसमें जो है ना वो घेरते नहीं है क्योंकि उसका मसला ये होता है कि उसका जो साइज है वो बहुत जो है ना वो माइन्यूट होता है जिस तरह हमने यहां पे देखा कि अगर जितना साइज हमारे पास 
पॉइंट टू अगर ये साइज पार्टिकल साइज पॉइंट टू हो तो इधर इफिकेसी आप लोग देखें नाइनटी नाइन पॉइंट नाइन फोर है जितना साइज आप बढ़ाते हैं पॉइंट थ्री पे आ जाए तो नाइनटी नाइन पॉइंट नाइन सिक्स जो है ना वो फिल्टर की इफिकेसी बढ़ती है कि वो उस चीज को घेरेगा तो जितना आप जो है ना अब इन मालिक्यूल्स की या जो गैस के जो वेपर्स है उसका साइज चूंकि कम होता है तो इस वजह से वो इसमें से जो है ना घेरते नहीं है वो उसमें रिटेन नहीं होते तो वो तमाम एक्टिविटीज पोरिंग पाइपिंग मिक्सिंग वोटेक्सिंग इस तरह की चीजों में जब आप इन्फेक्शियस एजेंट पे काम कर रहे होते हैं तो ये खतरा होता है कि या तो आप इन्फेक्ट हो सकते हैं या इन्वायरमेंट इन्फेक्ट जो है ना वो कंटेमिनेट हो सकता है या आपका प्रोडक्ट इस मकसद को सेफ रखने के लिए साफ रखने के लिए हम बायो सेफ्टी कैमरे का इस्तेमाल करते हैं थैंक यू सो मच यस फिर Philip, are you on the call still? Um, Michelle, yeah. can you? Just... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Sorry, uh, my my microphone uh, got deactivated by itself. So uh, I was saying that there was one question, but I won't answer it because it's about certification, and the next session will be devoted to to certification. So this this section is is more technical, but I think it's very important to understand uh, the, how the different types of, of biosafety cabinet work, uh, because it's 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 it, it will uh, have a large impact on things like the, how to use them and how they will cost, and also how to maintain them. So there are actually actually three main types of biosafety cabinets: class one, class two, and class three. And for class two, there are some uh, different subtypes, but I will first focus on the three main types. Class one biosafety cabinet actually is uh, uh, is a quite simple equipment. Uh, you have the enclosure here. It's a, it's not a totally closed enclosure. You you work uh, putting your hands here under a, a, a sash window, and you have a fan on the top of it. That fan will suck the air from the laboratory. That air will go on the in the working space and be sucked uh, there to a HEPA filter, and then will be released outside of the cabinet. Most of the time, outside of the cabinet means in the room, but it's okay because it's HEPA filtered, or possibly it could be uh, ducted uh, to the outside of the of the lab. Okay, so it's very simple. The air is taken away. From from the operator, so the laboratory, uh, the, lab, the operator, the person who is using the biosafety cabinet will not be exposed. Very simple, and 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 also the air which is uh, exhausted from that is HEPA filtered and can also be released. And so this is a very very efficient and very simple. So uh, that's I explain this. So the main characteristics of a class one biosafety cabinet is that the work area is in negative pressure. Why? Because the air is sucked out of the cabinet uh, and so it take, uh, clearly taken away from the operator. And also the, uh, the, fil uh, the, the air is filtered through EPA. So it offers a very efficient and robust protection of the operator and the work environment. Uh, also, uh, if you have a small lab, for instance, and you want to create some negative pressure in the lab, you could easily use a class one biosafety cabinet and connect it to the outside with some duct. And in that case, you will create a negative pressure in the lab because it sucks the air, the air out of the lab. The main limitation of 
class one cabinets is that they are not designed for product protection. We can still achieve a very good level of product protection, but we're based on work practice. The, the cabinet itself is not designed for that. It's not made on purpose to offer uh, product protection. Actually, you will see that biosafety cabinet look very much like uh, chemical hood. Uh, it's the same principle, sucking the air from, uh, from the, the lab and from the work surface and exhausting to the outside. The main difference is that biosafety cabinets have HEPA filters and chemical hoods, no filters or other types of filters. And also, if you want to be sure that you have a biosafety cabinet, you should check that it, they are certified as class one biosafety cabinets against the European norm 12469, uh, which, which is the only one that exists for, for such cabinets. Now, class two biosafety cabinets, uh, and these are the most used in, in, most, in most laboratories in most countries. You see immediately on, on the drawing on the right uh, side that it's, it's already much more complicated and uh, there are many more items. Um, you see that there is also a fan but that this fan actually does two things. First, it sucks the air from, from the lab, but that air from the lab does not go on the working space. It goes through some front grills under the workspace and goes like this behind. And then part of it is blown through HEPA filters on the working space. And the other part is blown out of the cabinet through another HEPA filter. This air which goes down, since it is HEPA filter is almost sterile, there are no particles anymore, so it is. it also protects the product. Hmm? No, the, air which, the air which is uh, uh, blown out of the cabinet is also a filter, so it can also be released either in, uh, in the lab, and that's mostly the case. It's almost always in the lab with this type of cabinet. So again, this, and you see that uh, with this type of cabinet, about 70% of the air is blown on the, on, on the work surface and 30% is exhausted. And those 30% are equivalent to the air which is entering at this level. Okay. One thing that we need to realize is that um, at this level, we have kind of a conflict between two air flows. This one, which is, which is pushed downward, is in positive pressure because it is pushed. And this one, which is uh, sucked from the lab, is in negative, uh, in negative pressure because it, it, it is sucked. And at this level, the pressure comes to zero. And that's the most important part of the cabinet. That's where the, what's, what's, uh, the part where the protection is, actually. If you blow too much air uh, down here, you have some air escaping the cabinet. That means that due to the activities here, you could be contaminated. If there is not enough air being sucked and so on, some air could go from the lab, go on the, on, on the, on the work surface, and you, have, you could have some external contamination. So this is... So it is very important that this, this protection is maintained. Could you please put your yeah. yeah. Um, so it is very important that this barrier is maintained, and that's extremely sensitive. And that's why we, with this type of class two biosafety cabinet, we need to have a very good uh, maintenance of those cabinets. We have to go to have some frequent verification of the way it works, and we have have to use very strict handling practices. So remember that with this complex way of, of working, the most important thing is to maintain this barrier here. And this barrier is extremely sensitive. So we need to be extremely careful about that. Uh, we'll see how in the later session. So the main characteristics of class two biosafety cabinets, at least it is general type of um, class two cabinets, is that they have a, a, an air barrier at the entrance, but that barrier is extremely sensitive. That's at the level of the front wheel. And that like with other cabinets, uh, the, the exhaust air is uh, filtrated. The main advantage of this cabinet, and that's why it's present in so many labs, 
is that it also it's also designed to offer product protection. So both the, pro the, the product and the person who is using the cabinet are protected. The main limitations are mostly due to that very sensitive air barrier. And because of that, you, you need to rely on, on very good functioning. That means that you have a good need to have a very good maintenance and, and, and checking program and also very good work practices. Also, because it's more complex and because you need that, uh, that additional maintenance and, 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 and verification, uh, actually, it's, it is most costful. Uh, so it is more expensive not only to buy, but also to use such cabinet. We'll see that there are also some laminar flow bench that look very much like safety cabinets. Uh, some look almost identical. The, the only way to be sure that we have a biosafety cabinet is that uh, is to check the air certification. Biosafety cabinets need to be certified as such as class two biosafety cabinet against the European norm or the uh, American norm, which is NSF NC49. So to be sure, if you if you don't if you have an equipment that looks like a biosafety cabinet and that does not have that certification, you cannot be sure that it is a biosafety cabinet. Then class three biosafety cabinets. Uh, in this case, you have a completely closed uh, system. So it's, it's a closed box. There is no opening. The only two access uh, to the outside are uh, the two EPA filters. So actually there is also a fan. That fan is sucking the air from the lab, but the, the EPA filter uh, here filtrates the air that enters. So that means that it is almost sterile. And then also the, uh, the air, when it's sent out of the cabinet, is also HEPA filter. In this case, with two filters, but that's not always the case. So since it's a, a closed system, you need to work to, with heavy gloves that are attached to some pores at the entrance here. In this case, you have two pairs of gloves. You could also have bio, uh, class three biosafety cabinets with just one pair of gloves. So the main characteristic of that is that it's a totally closed system and it's airtight. That means that it is, in principle, it is extremely protective for both the product and the person. It's a negative pressure because the air is sucked out of the cabinet and there is, like with the other cabinets, some air filtration. The main advantages are a very high level of operator and environment protection. So it's extremely efficient in protecting the people who work with that type of cabinet. It's also very good with respect to product protection, but not necessarily as good as we think. Indeed, inside of the cabinet, sorry, inside of the cabinet, there might be some turbulence. We don't have something which is laminar. And because of that, you could have some cross-contamination of your product. So for instance, if you have clean, uh, the clean product on the on one side and dirty one on the, on the other, the fact that there are turbulence, you could have some cross-contamination. The main limitations are uh, that it's very difficult to use that kind of cabinet. There are, they have, we, we, they're, they're very demanding with respect to work practices. For instance, we should have everything inside of the cabinet before we start working. If we forgot something, it's a, di it, it, it's, it's a difficulty to get it in. Uh, we have to stop the experiment and so on. Also, uh, because, of, the, uh, because of, of, of those gloves, uh, it's not always fit uh, for everyone with respect to ergonomics. Very large people or very small people might not be, uh, be able to work properly in there because of the, of the distance between the two gloves. Also with respect to dexterity, those gloves are heavy protective gloves. But so with that kind of gloves, it's much more difficult to do some fine handling than with some latex or nitrile gloves. The last drawback is the high cost of that kind of, of, of cabinet. Also, with this type of cabinet, you will find some motors, equip some other types of equipment that, that look very much alike, but that have a different purpose. They are co called isolator of glove box. Some of those glove box are for chemical purpose or, or for some, uh, or only for product protection. Again, the only way to be sure that you have a biosafety cabinet is to order or to check that you have that certification uh, against the European norm. Okay, these, these were the three main types of cabinets. And so they are quite different from each other uh, and with different characteristics, okay? 
these are the different subtypes of, of class two cabinets. Class two A2, that's the one I described. So that's the normal one. And that's the one which is present in most labs in the US or in Europe, for instance. And then you have two other types of, cabin, of cabinets, class two cabinets is class two B1 and class two B2. If we look at class two B1, it's a little bit more complicated. Uh, actually, the air, there is also a fan. The air is set like in the normal basic, class two biocetic cabinet at the entrance under the work surface and then uh, sucked to, to the upper part of the cabinet. Part of it is recirculated on the work surface. So until now, it's still the same functioning principle as the A2, but part of the air is also sucked to the outside, sucked by another fan, which is not part of the cabinet, that's part of the ventilation system. And there is a hard duct, so this is airtight, that helps sucking the air from there. And so because of that, you have a much stronger exhaust of air and you have less recirculating air. In this case, for instance, or instead of having 70%, which is recirculate, you only have 30% and 70%, which is exhausted. That means that the barrier here might be a little bit uh, uh, better, but that, uh, and that the purpose of that is that you could also handle some uh, nasty volatile chemicals, for instance, if you use very toxic solvents, for instance, together with your culture, which is not very often, in that case, you could use this type of cabinet because 70% of those solvents will be evacuated and only a very small part will be recirculated. Class two is uh, also complicated, uh, but perhaps uh, easier to understand. Actually, you still suck the air from, from, from the lab to offer that protection at the entrance. But for the laminar flow, so to protect the product, you have an additional source of air. So you have another, uh, another opening on the top that sucks all the air that is needed to protect the product. And so that air is sucked from, from, the, lab, uh, from the laboratory and pushed through the, um, to the work surface. So this is pretty good from a uh, protection, uh, product protection point of view. And then that air together with the air at the entrance is sucked outside of, well, outside of the cabinet. So a hundred percent air from there and from there is exhausted. There is no recirculation at all. And so again, this type of cabinet is made to use both biological materials, which is in, are infectious together with very toxic uh, volatile products, which is not a frequent uh, situation, I repeat myself. So remember that class two is 100% exhausted, but it has to be hard ducted. There need to be a hard ducting, tight, airtight ducting to the outside, and you need an extra fan. So the two types uh, B uh, cabinets have some common feature. Uh, the laminar flow uh, is EPA filtered uh, on the working space, which is the case from, for uh, class, uh, the normal class two cabinets. But the, all, I mean, those two uh, B, type B cabinets necessarily need to have a hard duct, so an airtight duct to the outside, and also a, 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 an extra fan in the ventilation system. And that's usually part of the heat and ventilation air conditioning unit. But that means that you all first have to have that kind of sophisticated unit, and then that you need to have a very good balance between that fan of the HVAC unit and the fan of the of uh, of the uh, biosafety cabinet. Sorry. For instance, air in that in that case you you will uh, suck too much air at that level also, and you you, you might lose some product protection. If you you don't extract enough, that's even more. In that case, you might uh, have some some air which is pushed outside of the cabinet, and you might uh, expose the operator. To, uh, so you might lose your protective uh, uh, efficiency. So what we need to know, to know is that with those two cabinets, we need a perfect balance between the two fans: the fan from the biosafety cabinet and the fan from the ventilation system. And that requires sophisticated engineering. And it's not easy to achieve and maintain. Even in Western countries, there are difficulties to, to have that working properly. I know a number of class B cabinets installed in Pakistan 
many of them don't work properly. And in some cases, they had to be replaced by normal class two biosafety cabinet. So normally, we should not use class two B cabinets. It's only for a very specific purpose. So if there is theoretically a better safety because you exhaust most of the air, actually, because of the risk of unbalance between the two airflows, uh, it can result in very dangerous situation. If, for instance, there is a, a variation in the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the fan of the uh, ventilation unit, you might really be exposed without even knowing it. So again, it's time for some uh, summary in Odoo and, and possibly some, some questions. So Javed, if you could help, please. इस सेक्शन में हमने डिफरेंट टाइप्स देखने हैं सबसे पहले हमारे पास जो है बेसिकली जो बायोसेफ्टी कैबिनेट्स के टाइप्स है वो तीन हैं इसमें जो क्लास वन बायोसेफ्टी कैबिनेट है ये बेसिकली हमारे एनवायरनमेंट और पर्सन की प्रोटेक्शन के लिए होता है अब इसमें अगर हम इसकी वर्क आ, जो एयर फ्लो है वो देखें तो लेब से जो है ना वो एयर हमारे पास वर्किंग एरिया में एंटर हो रही है जो कि यहाँ पे नेगेटिव प्रेशर जो है ना वो डेवलप होता है और यहाँ से जो है ना हमारे पास हीबा फिल्टर के थ्रू एयर एग्जास्ट होता है अब जो भी 100 परसेंट यहाँ पे एयर जो एंटर होता है वो एज सच 100 परसेंट जो है ना वो हमारे पास एग्जास्ट होता है कोई रिसर्कुलेशन हमारे पास यहाँ पे नहीं है अब इस वजह से हमारे पास सिर्फ यहाँ पे एग्जास्ट पे जो है ना वो हीपा फिल्टर लगा होता है जिसमें और इस वजह से सिर्फ एनवायरनमेंट की और हमारे पास पर्सन की प्रोटेक्शन है क्योंकि प्रोडक्ट के ऊपर हमारे पास लेप की कंटेमिनेटेड एयर आ रही होती तो प्रोडक्ट की कंटेमिनेशन प्रोडक्ट की जो प्रोटेक्शन है वो हमारे पास नहीं होती इसमें अब इसमें एक चीज जो है वो ये याद रखे कि क्लास वन बायोसेफ्टी कैबिनेट अक्सर इस तरह का जो है ना वो आप लोगों का केमिकल हुट का भी स्ट्रक्चर सेम होता है लेकिन आप लोगों ने जो चीज याद रखनी है वो ये देखनी है कि ई एन जो यूरोपियन यूनियन का 12, 469, 2000 के जो आ, अगर ये सर्टिफाइड है तो इट मीन कि ये क्लास वन बायोसेफ्टी कैबिनेट है अगर इसकी सर्टिफिकेशन मिस है तो इसका मतलब ये कोई और हुड टाइप है लेकिन ये क्लास वन बायोसेफ्टी कैबिनेट नहीं है क्लास टू बायोसेफ्टी कैबिनेट क्लास टू बायोसेफ्टी कैबिनेट में बेसिकली आपके ऑपरेटर की आपके प्रोडक्ट की और इन्वायरमेंट तीनों की प्रोटेक्शन होती है यहाँ से आप लोगों की फ्रंट ग्रिल ये फ्रंट ग्रिल है ये रियर ग्रिल है फ्रंट ग्रिल के थ्रू जो है ना वो हमारे पास एयर एंटर होती है यहाँ से 70 परसेंट जो है ना वो आप लोगों की एयर रिसर्कुलेट होती है और 30 परसेंट जो है ना वो एग्जास्ट होती है तो आप लोगों के प्रोडक्ट के ऊपर भी जो एयर आ रही होती है वो हमारे पास कंटेमिनेटेड uh, नहीं होती उसमें कोई भी जरासीन जो है ना वो नहीं होता और आप लोगों का प्रोडक्ट जो है ना वो प्रोटेक्टेड रहता है अब इसमें और जो एयर एंटर होती है फ्रंट ग्रिल में वो भी हमारे पास जो है थर्टी परसेंट होती है बायोसेफ्टी कैमिनेट जो क्लास टू है उसके बारे में जो मेन बहुत ज्यादा जिसकी जिसकी वजह से कैबिनेट की सेंसिटिविटी और उसके ऊपर काम करना जो है ना वो थोड़ा सा मुश्किल हो जाता है वो ये है कि इसका जो फ्रंट ग्रिल है अगर ये इस पर थोड़ा सा भी ये ब्लॉकेज आ गया या इसको आप लोगों ने ब्लॉक कर दिया या इसके ऊपर आप लोगों ने कोई मटीरियल वगैरह रख दिया या ऊपर कोई पंखा वगैरह चला हुआ है कि जिससे यहाँ पे जो एयर जो 30 परसेंट की मैं बात कर रहा हूं और वो अगर यहाँ पे एस उस हिसाब से ना एंटर हो अंदर ना जाए तो यहाँ पे आप लोगों की प्रोडक्ट और ऑपरेटर दोनों की जो प्रोटेक्शन है उन दोनों की जो है ना वो वो हमारे पास क्वेश्चन एमर बन जाती है और यहाँ पे जो है ना वो उसकी उनकी प्रोटेक्शन जो है ना वो कंप्रोमाइज हो जाती है मतलब उनके चांसेस जो है ना वो प्रोटेक्शन के कम हो जाते हैं अब क्लास वन के क्लास वन में चूंकि हमारे पास आ, सिर्फ एनवायरनमेंट और ऑपरेटर की थी तो इसमें साथ प्रोडक्ट प्रोटेक्शन भी ऐड हो गया जिसकी वजह से तीनों की प्रोटेक्शन हमारे पास जो है ना वो इस क्लास टू बायोसेफ्टी कैबिनेट में होती है क्लास टू बायोसेफ्टी कैबिनेट को बेसिकली जो वर्टिकल लेमिनर फ्लो बेंच था उससे कन्वर्ट करके जो है ना क्लास टू बायोसेफ्टी कैबिनेट बनाया गया था अब कुछ कुछ जगहों पर आप लोग अगर लेमिनर फ्लो हुड देखे तो उसको अगर आप लोग कंफ्यूज हो कि ये पता नहीं क्लास टू बायोसेफ्टी कैमरेट है या नहीं है तो उसका सिंपल जो है ना ये सर्टिफिकेशन देखे कि ये इस 
स्टैंडर्ड के मुताबिक वो अगर सर्टिफाइड है तो इसका मतलब ये है कि वो क्लास टू बाई सेफ्टी कैमिनट है क्योंकि बहुत सारे लोग जो है ना वो लेब में इस बात पे कंफ्यूज हो जाते हैं कि पता नहीं ले लेमिनर फ्लो हो रही या क्लास टू बाई सेफ्टी कैमिनट है क्लास थ्री बाई सेफ्टी कैमिनट हमारे पास बिल्कुल मुकम्मल एक क्लोज सिस्टम है कि जिसमें हमारे पास यहाँ पे सिंगल हीपा फिल्टर लगा है एग्जास्ट पे हमारे पास डबल हीपा फिल्टर लगा है तो हमारे पास अगेन यहाँ पे प्रोडक्ट की ऑपरेटर की और इन्वायरमेंट तीनों की यहाँ पे प्रोटेक्शन हमारे पास मौजूद है और क्लास थ्री बाई सेफ्टी कैमरा चूंकि मुकम्मल तौर पे एक क्लोज जो है ना वो सिस्टम है तो इस वजह से हमारे पास और हीपा और एग्जास्ट पे हमारे पास डबल डबल हीपा फिल्टर लगा है तो हमारे पास बंदे जो बंदा काम कर रहे हैं और जो इन्वायरमेंट है उनकी प्रोटेक्शन जो है ना वो मजीद बढ़ जाती है बायोसेफ्टी कैमरेट क्लास टू के मुकाबले में मसला सिर्फ और सिर्फ जो लिमिटेशन है वो ये कि इसकी कास्ट बहुत ज्यादा है और चूंकि यहाँ पे ग्लव्स के अंदर ही आप लोगों ने हाथ एंटर करना होता है अंदर करना होता है ये सेस जो है ना वो आ, सामने से बिल्कुल बंद होती है तो इस वजह से इस पर थोड़ा सा काम करना मुश्किल हो जाता है अब कुछ जगहों पर आप लोग अगेन एक आइसोलेटर फार्म में होते हैं या कुछ ग्लोव बॉक्स होते हैं लोग उसको जो है ना वो क्लेम करते हैं उस ये आ, कि ये क्लास थ्री जो है ना वो बायोसेफ्टी कैमरेट है अगेन अगर आप लोगों ने उसके बारे में कंफ्यूज है तो ये सर्टिफिकेशन यूरोपियन यूनियन के मुताबिक अगर उसकी जो स्टैंडर्ड है वो देख ले तो अगर आ, वो अगर से उसकी सर्टिफिकेशन है तो इसका मतलब तब उसके बाद कहीं जाके वो क्लास थ्री बायोसेफ्टी कैमरेट हो सकता है वरना वो एक आम ग्लव बॉक्स हो सकता है लेकिन क्लास थ्री बायोसेफ्टी कैमरेट नहीं होगा क्लास ए टू बी वन और बी टू में डिफरेंसेस जो है ना वो मेजरली जो फर्क है वो हवा के आम द्रफ्त का है यहाँ पे हमारे पास ए टू में सेवेंटी परसेंट जो है हवा रिसर्कुलेट होती है और थर्टी परसेंट एग्जास्ट होती है यहाँ पे हमारे पास सेवेंटी परसेंट जो है ना वो हमारे पास एयर एग्जास्ट होती है सिर्फ थर्टी परसेंट रिसर्कुलेट होती है और यहाँ पे हमारे पास हंड्रेड एयर जो है ना वो एग्जास्ट uh, होती है सर्कुलेशन हमारे पास रिसर्कुलेशन हमारे पास यहाँ पे जीरो परसेंट है ये मेजरली हाईली टॉक्सिक केमिकल के लिए इस्तेमाल होता है और ये वाला हमारे पास जो है जो क्लास ए टू है ये बेसिकली इन्फेक्शियस एजेंट पे काम करने के लिए इस्तेमाल होता है तो दूसरा इनमें जो मेन डिफरेंस आ रहा है वो ये है कि ये इसकी जो एयर एग्जास्ट होती है क्लास ए की तो वो एग्जास्ट के बाद वो जो जो एयर है वो आपकी लेब में डायरेक्ट आ सकती है यहाँ पे ए बी वन में और बी टू में यहाँ पे हार्ड डप्टेड है कि जो एयर एग्जास्ट होगी वो लेब से बाहर जाएगी वो आपकी लेब के अंदर नहीं आएगी अब क्लास टू बायोसेफ्टी कैमरेट जो है ना वो हमारे पास जो टाइप बी है वो क्यों यहाँ पे अक्सर मार्केट में लोग जो है ना वो जो वेंडर होते हैं वो लोगों को कंफ्यूज कराते हैं कि 100 परसेंट एयर एग्जास्ट है तो आपकी प्रोटेक्शन ज्यादा हो जाएगी ये हो जाएगा वो हो जाएगा वो आप लोगों को सिर्फ कंफ्यूज और अपनी मार्केटिंग करने के लिए होती है उसमें बेसिकली हम क्लास टू टाइप बी में क्या होता है कि दो फैन लगे होते हैं एक जो हमारे पास कैबिनेट uh, का अपना जो है ना वो एग्जास्ट uh, जो फैन है एक वो होता है और जो दूसरा जो है वो आप लोगों के बिल्डिंग जहां से एयर एग्जास्ट होती है एक फैन वहां पे लग, लगा हो, लगना होना चाहिए जो कि अक्सर हमारे लेब में जो है ना वो ये चीज की कमी होती है जिसकी वजह से हम अक्सर प्रॉब्लम का शिकार हो जाते हैं और दोनों फैन में ये बैलेंस भी रखना बहुत जरूरी है अगर ये बैलेंस आप लोगों का मेनटेन ना हो बराबर ना हो तो आप लोग का जो है ना वो जो प्रोडक्ट है या जो आप लोगों की अपनी जाने वो खतरे में पड़ सकती है Yes, Thank you very much, uh, so now I will present briefly the, the other types of enclosures. It will not take too much time to do that. Uh, first, the chemical hood, very simple, same principle as the uh, as class one. You have a fan. Uh, sometimes out of the cabinet and you suck the air from the lab to the work surface so it's but this is made for for chemical protection and so you don't have hepa filter in that case you have either no filter or a charcoal filter adapted to the different type of chemical products laminar flow benches uh in that case you have uh you have the purpose is not to protect the operator. The only purpose is to protect the product that the, the operator is handling. Two main types, 
horizontal or vertical. On the horizontal type, the air is taken behind the cabinet and blown to the to the work surface. And that, that means actually to the face of the operator. There is no window there. And so that means that everything that will be handled there will go into the, the face of the operator. That means that clearly uh, we cannot use of course, not hazardous biological agent or infectious products or anything, but no hazardous chemicals and no dust that could cause problems in the lungs and so on. So nothing hazardous. Laminar airflow cabinets, and that was one of the questions you asked. Uh, in that case, you suck part of the cabinet and then it's blown on the surface from the top on the surface going to a HEPA filter. So this is laminar and in that case you uh, you don't have any recirculation in most cases and most of the air, not not always all the air, but most of the air goes in the face of the operator again. So it's less obvious that we horizontal type but it's it's clear that if you handle anything that is dangerous, that is hazardous, it will go to the operator. And this type of cabinet, actually of laminar flow bench, is quite difficult to recognize from a biosafety cabinet. They have, they might have a, a, a rear grill, they might have a front grill. So again, if you want to be sure that you have a biosafety cabinet, you need to check the certification. A third type of cabinet or enclosure is the PCR workstation. So these are only made to protect the product. And the product is mainly DNA and RNA. They are quite small, and the purpose is to isolate that surface from the rest of the lab, which could be contaminated by some other DNA or RNA. Two types. One is just a simple enclosure. You work uh, there, uh, for, you put your hands through there, without any ventilation at all. It's just a separation from the bench with some UV light. This one is a little bit more sophisticated. You suck the air from the uh, from the outside and recycle it like like this with some HEPA filter. But any in any case, it does not offer any protection of the operator of the person who is handling the, the system. So it's only done to handle DNA and RNA, which are not infectious. But if you have to extract DNA or RNA from some biological materials, from infectious material, you should not use these cabinets. You should use a biosafety cabinet. This is only for kind of naked DNA or RNA one after they have been extracted. The last uh, type of cabinet I want to present is what is called ventilated workstation. Actually, I will simplify, but it is very close to a class one biosafety cabinet. So very good protection, extremely robust equipment, very simple. The main difference is that this you can build yourself, and the the plans, the the, the, the yeah the the plans to build that type of, of cabinet is available on the web. Also, the way to check if it works properly, the maintenance program and so on, all that is available on the web. That means that if you have someone who is a little bit skilled and can use this type of materials like uh, uh, steel and so on, that could be built. In, a, in an institution. Also, some uh, Pakistani, manu Pakistani manufacturer could produce a number of those cabinets for different institutions. And so I think that this is a very interesting option for, for a number of institutions. If they want to have a very good uh, personal protection because they handle infectious material, they could use this type of cabinet. It was first designed for tuberculosis smear microscopy, which is uh, relative low BSL2 activity, I would say. And so it would be at least be useful for any activity with the same more or less low level of risk. Of course, perhaps not for the most sophisticated activity, but still it can offer a number of, of, uh, of a, a, a very good protection for many activities, for instance, in, in diagnostic labs and so on. So, Yes, I will answer one question now because it was asked after the session before. Uh, one of you was asking, what do you mean by heavy gloves? Actually, uh, the, the gloves that we use for handling in the lab, they are uh, either nitrile or, or latex gloves. They are very fine and not very resistant. So we have to change them when they are uh, torn or when, when they are wet and so on. We change them once in the, or we, and we change them before the next work session, okay? Those gloves, which are attached to the class three biosafety cabinet, they have to stay there for months without being damaged. 
And because of that, it's quite heavy uh, rubber. And because it's quite heavy rubber, it's not very flexible. And so it's more difficult to work with that than with the normal protection gloves. Okay, Javet, now if you could uh, summarize the, the last session, please. By safety community, we have more than 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 we have कि जिसमें हमारे पास जो एयर एंटर होती है वो 100% यहां से एग्जॉस्ट होती है अब हमारे पास फर्क सिर्फ और ये होता है कि यहां पे हमारे पास एक तो हीपा फिल्टर नहीं है केमिकल फ्यूम हुड में दूसरा ये है कि यहां पे ये जो एग्जॉस्ट है ये हार्ड डक्टेड होता है हार्ड डक्टेड का मतलब कि यहां से जो एयर एग्जॉस्ट होगी वो लेब से बाहर जाएगी अब अगर आप लोग समझ रहे हैं अगर आप लोगों की लेब की जरूरत है कि आप लोगों की यहां से जो हवा निकले वो आप लोगों की लेब में आए तो फिर आप लोगों को चारकोल के फिल्टर जो है ना वो इसमें से लगाने होंगे ताकि वो जो केमिकल्स है वो उसमें से अब्सॉर्ब हो के जो एयर यहां से एग्जिट होगी वो साफ निकले ठीक है तो इससे जो है ना वो ये है कि जो बंदा काम कर रहा है और जो एनवायरमेंट है वो दोनों प्रोटेक्टेड है केमिकल पे काम करने के लिए फिर हमारे पास एलिमिनर फ्लो बेंचेस होते हैं लेमिनर फ्लो बेंचेस में नॉर्मल हम अगर फॉर एग्जांपल किसी ऐसे प्रोडक्ट पे काम कर रहे हो जिसमें कोई इंफेक्शियस एजेंट नहीं है ठीक है फॉर एग्जांपल मिसाल के तौर पे आप लोग मीडिया बना रहे हैं उसको सर्टिफाई कर रहे हैं प्लेट पे उसको जो है पोरिंग कर रहे हैं अब उसमें कोई इंफेक्शियस एजेंट नहीं है लेकिन प्रोडक्ट की प्रोटेक्शन आप लोगों की जो है ना वो प्राइमरी जो आप लोग चाह रहे हैं कि वो आप लोगों की जो प्रोडक्ट है वो सेफ रहे तो उस कंडीशन में भी जो है ना वो आप लोग लेमिनर फ्लो हुड को इस्तेमाल कर सकते हैं ये दो तरह का है एक हमारे पास है हॉरिजॉन्टल के जिसमें एयर की जो डायरेक्शन है वो आपकी तरफ होगी दूसरा है वर्टिकल के जिसमें जो एयर की डायरेक्शन है वो नीचे आपकी प्रोडक्ट की तरफ होगी दोनों में जो है ना हमारे पास वो हीपा फिल्टर से हो के वो हवा जो है ना वो आएगी आपके ऊपर या आपके प्रोडक्ट के ऊपर तो इस वजह से हमारे पास यहां पे सिर्फ और सिर्फ एक प्रोडक्ट की प्रोटेक्शन जो है ना वो है और चूंकि वो हवा आपके ऊपर आ रही है और अगर आप लोग इस कैबिनेट में कोई ऐसी चीज पे काम कर रहे हैं कि जो इंफेक्शियस हो तो वो इंफेक्टेड जो हवा है वो आप लोगों के ऊपर आएगी जिससे आप लोग सेफ नहीं रह सकते और ना ही आप लोगों का जो एनवायरमेंट है वो सेफ तो लेमिनर फ्लो होल्ड में बेसिकली आप लोगों का जो सिर्फ प्रोडक्ट है वो सेफ रहता है बाकी एनवायरमेंट और जो ऑपरेटर है वो सेफ नहीं रहते फिर पीसीआर वर्क स्टेशन है ये इस तरह के छोटे-छोटे वर्क स्टेशन होते हैं कि जिसमें हमारे पास या तो हीपा फिल्टर नहीं होता या होता है लेकिन उसकी जो प्रोटेक्शन है वो इतनी लेवल की नहीं होती फॉर एग्जांपल अगर आप लोग सिर्फ और सिर्फ उसको आरएनए और डीएनए पे काम करने के लिए इस्तेमाल कर सकते हैं लेकिन आरएनए डीएनए की एक्सट्रैक्शन उसमें नहीं कर सकते क्योंकि वो आप लोगों की जो एयर है वो आप लोगों की तरफ एग्जिट हो के आप लोगों की तरफ ही आएगी तो जो हमारे पास पीसीआर वर्क स्टेशन है ये सिर्फ और सिर्फ आरएनए और डीएनए पे काम करने के लिए होती है फिर ट्यूबरक्लोसिस की जो माइक्रो स्मियर माइक्रोस्कोपी होती थी तो उस पे काम करने के लिए ये नीचे पीडीएफ में एक लिंक दिया भी है इस पे आप लोग जाके इस तरह की चीज आप लोग खुद बना भी सकते हैं किसी वेंडर के थ्रू अब उसमें होता क्या है कि जो एयर यहां से एंटर होती है यहां पे हार्ड डक्टेड और ये हार्ड डक्टेड छत के साथ कनेक्ट करके जो है ना वो यहां से एयर जो है वो बाहर जाएगी तो आप लोग माइक्रोस्कोपी जो है ना वो जो ट्यूबरक्लोसिस की है वो सेफली तरीके से कर सकते हैं इसमें कोई हीपा फिल्टर नहीं लगा और जो एग्जॉस्ट है वो आप लोगों की हार्ड डक्टेड है जो कि हवा को बाहर की तरफ लेके जाएगी तो आप लोग अपनी रूटीन में जहां पे जिन ممالک में या जिन इलाकों में मिसाल के तौर पे गिलगित में हमने देखा था ये कि गिलगित में उन्होंने बाकायदा इस जगह एक एक लैब में बाकायदा टी का लेब था कि माइक्रोस्कोपी के लिए उसको बनाया भी था और उसको जो है ना उन्होंने उस चीज को लकड़ी से खुद डिजाइन किया था तो आप लोग इस तरह के जो है ना वो डिजाइन इस लिंक के मुताबिक जो है ना वो कर सकते हैं थैंक यू सो मच फिलिप थैंक यू वेरी मच अवेल एक्चुअली देयर आर टू क्वेश्चंस आई कुड आंसर दिस टाइम द नेक्स्ट द अदर्स आई विल आंसर ड्यूरिंग द नेक्स्ट सेशन बिकॉज़ देयर आर रियली रिलेटेड द नेक्स्ट सेशन So the first one is about the, uh, the hyperfiltration and the size of particles. So uh, actually, uh, particles, they can be like 0 0.2 micro, uh, micrometer, 0 0.1 micrometer, or a little bit lower. So it's, and in that case, they, be, they are in the lowest part of the curve, but so they are well retained. 
If we speak about volatile molecules, those are light molecules. They are not in the range of the micrometer, but nanometer, which is 1,000 type, type, uh, times smaller, 1,000. And that's for some of the largest molecules. The small one may even be 10,000 times uh, smaller. And so there is a huge range in the difference of, part of particles. Uh, but for instance, as a complement of, of information, if you have liquids with, with some uh, chemicals inside, in, inside of that liquid, and you create an aerosol with that, it will not be volatile particles. So that liquid, even if there is some chemical substance, they will be blocked by the HEPA filters. But just the small volatile molecules, they will go through it. The second question is about uh, that uh, v, uh, uh, ventilated workstation. And the fact that it's for a tuberculous microscopy, but actually it's to prepare the smear for microscopy. And that, uh, the person says that uh, it's normally done in the open bench uh, in, in their province. Actually, it's true that it is often done in a bench, but actually that uh, specific equipment was developed um, with the strong support of WHO because they noticed that uh, that type of activity, including a number of other activities, were, do were done on the bench because people were not able to afford a biosafety cabinet. And so they really did want, and, and many people do uh, smear microscopy in, in many countries, many limited resource countries. And that's why WHO really tried to find a solution, a solution that is adapted to that. So uh, doing it on the bench is not extremely hazardous. It's not extremely risky for the operator, but there is a risk. And really uh, the WHO want to reduce that risk. And that's why they promote that project to develop the uh, ventilator workstation. And, and of course, one, since the product now is available, uh, you could use it for, for some other low risk activities but that perhaps are done on the bench now. So that's, that's, I think that's the message that you, you should remember. And on the slides, you saw that uh, there, is a, there are the internet uh, links to that. So don't hesitate to go and have a look at that. Also, the slides will be available uh, uh, on, the, on the PEPSA website and, and the presentation on, the, on YouTube. YouTube. Uh, correct, Marshall and uh, Paria? Okay, I think it's time for now uh, to uh, to close this session. We have a record of all your questions, so uh, those that were not answered during the session, we will really make uh, make sure that they are answered at the end of, of, of all the session during the last the last one. So um, I hope that you will you were interested by this uh, first session of of this workshop, and I hope that you will be there at the next one. So. Thank you very much for your attention and hope to see you next time.